a little bit kind of the same way. You know, in this one I'll use f of x notation just to kind of help you guys out. h of x, let's pretend, is f of x and times g of x. Right? So if I'm using the product rule, I know h prime of x is going to equal then f prime of x times g of x plus uh, f of x times g prime of x. Right, that would just be the product rule using the function notation. Um, so a couple different, um, now the issues, if I'm saying this is f of x, I gotta figure out what f prime is, right? So sometimes, it's may, sometimes it might be a little easier just to do the derivative on its own. Right? Let's figure out, let's figure out what f prime of x is. Well, f prime of x is going to be, you're gonna have you know, your numerator or your denominator, so you're basically going to be looking at d over dx of your denominator times your numerator minus your uh, numerator times the derivative of your numerator times your denominator all over the denominator squared. Now, for obviously purposes, guys, we're going to want to simplify this, right? We're going to want to like see what exactly this can be simplified to. Um, so let's go ahead and take the derivative here. So that's going to be derivative of x plus 3 is just going to be 1 times x plus 4 minus, here's where the parentheses is going to come really important. This is again 1 times x plus 3 all over x plus 3 squared. Now, when we go ahead and simplify this, we really leave with x plus 4 minus x minus 3 all over x plus 3 squared. All right, so just make sure you distribute that negative. Okay, so now you can see the x's go to 0, and we have 4 minus 3 is 1 over x plus 3 squared. So we found f prime. It took us a little work, but we found f prime. Um, g prime is not going to be as bad, right? We can figure out g prime of x. I'm not even going to show my work here. g prime of x is just 2. Yes, does everybody see how I kind of found the derivative of each of these? And you can do these on a separate, you know, separate like on the side or something if you need to. Because obviously with the quotient rule, what you know it takes a little bit of work. But does anybody have any issues with how I did or how I showed the quotient rule? Yes? Why did you put the second term in brackets? The second term? No, yeah. Right there. Uh, I mean you can use parentheses again, but I use the brackets here, so I'm just using the brackets again. But then you put the brackets in the other one too. Where does that do? What? This one? Yeah. You could. The reason why I'm putting brackets is I'm just reminding you that on the quotient rule you're subtracting the derivative of your numerator times the uh, denominator. So you're going to subtract the whole thing and why that shows up. In the last problem, it didn't matter because we had like, because um, we had two terms that, you know, we had two, a mono, we had a, a polynomial, a monomial, and we had a trig term. So it didn't matter. Here, it matters because when I simplify this, I get x plus 3. So you're subtracting x plus 3. If you don't put the parentheses in there, you'll get confused, or at least a lot of people will, and they'll just subtract x, not subtract x plus 3. Because you'll see what happened is I distributed that negative across the brackets, I got negative x minus 3, right? So I just use those, I use these brackets on the quotient rule because I, just like yourself, will make mistakes and I'll forget about it. So to prevent me from making that distributive property mistake, I'll make sure I put brackets around it, okay? But in like the general rule, like, uh, I'll, I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, I thought it was like an extra. No, it's not an extra derivative. I'll show you the practical. I'll show you what I the difference what I'm showing. Um, but anyways, now we have f prime of x. We have g prime of x, and then that's all we need for the product rule, right? Because essentially that really is just the product rule. So um, to find h prime of x, it's simply just going to be f prime of x, which we figured to be one over x plus three squared times g prime of x. I'm sorry, f prime of x times g of x 
g of x is just 2x plus 5. And then that's plus f prime of x, which is x plus 4 over x plus 3. And then that's going to be times g prime of x, which is just 2. Okay? Now, we could continue again getting a little bit um, a little bit more fun with simplifying here, because when you multiply this, you get 2x plus 5 over 1, sorry, over x plus 3 squared, plus, let's distribute this into 2x plus 8 over x plus 3. Now, if I wanted, yes? Uh, I was just going to ask, how do you get the g of x real quick? How do I get the g of x? Like, this is f of x? That's g of x. Right? So I, I took the product and said the first term is f of x, second term is g of x. You can label them however you want to. You can call them z of x and y of x if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. It's just knowing the, a lot of times this is kind of a defined idea of the, of the derivative. But guys, these are common denominators. What if your final answer is a common denominator? Can we get common denominators? Yes. All right. I know. It's more than that. I agree. But let's get common denominators. Okay. So now when I get common denominators, h prime of x equals 2x plus 5 over x plus 3 squared. Um, oops, let's do this. Plus, let's multiply these out. So I get 2x squared plus 8x plus 6x plus 24 all over x plus 3 squared. Then we'll simplify this one last time. And let's see, we get 2x squared. 8x plus 6x is going to be 14x, plus 2x is 16x, plus 24, all over x plus 3 squared. Yes? We have to add the 5 from 2x plus 5. So it'd be 5. Five. Oh, did I not? I forgot to add 5. Yes, 29. Thank you. It's a lot of math, right? It's a lot of opportunities to make mistakes. So please check over my work because I'm not immune to making mistakes either. Okay, but that, that's the result you guys are seeing in a multiple choice test. Like that. All right? Now, obviously, again, as I mentioned, one.